Welcome to the CDT research skills session on metrics and metrics, which are an important aspect of managing your online profile as they demonstrate the impact of your research. A definition of bibliometrics is a statistical analysis of written publications used to provide a measurable analysis of academic literature. But what does this mean in practice? Researchers might use metrics uh, to decide where to publish, to determine what journals are good quality or which have a good high profile. They may use metrics to assess the quality of a paper, often because of the journal it has been published in. They may use metrics to decide who to collaborate with, where do they publish or how productive are they. The main use for metrics by researchers has traditionally been to demonstrate the impact of their research to potential funders and collaborators and to their institution when applying for promotion. But there are problems with relying on metrics to assess the quality of a research output or an author, as we shall see. The University of Cambridge is a signatory of DORA, the San Francisco Declaration on Research Assessment. DORA recommends that institutions should be explicit about the criteria used to reach hiring, tenure and promotion decisions. DORA considers that highlighting the content of a paper is much more important than publication metrics or the identity of the journal in which it was published. DORA also recommends that institutions should consider the value and impact of all research outputs, including data sets and software, and a broad range of impact measures, including qualitative indicators of research impact, such as influence on policy and practice for the purposes of research assessment. DORA is not prescriptive about where you can publish your work, it's just that where you publish should not determine the quality of that work. The University has, by signing this declaration, committed to moving away from simply using quantitative metrics to assess or demonstrate quality of research and to move towards more qualitative indicators. I'll be focusing on these metrics today as they are the most likely ones you'll come across. The Journal Impact Factor, or GIF, the H-index, citation analysis, and then altmetrics. I'll describe what they are and look at the pros and cons of each. The GIF is one of the most common metrics in use. It's calculated by the number of citations papers in a journal are cited on average over the preceding two years. It measures the rank or importance of a journal. The higher the number, the higher the impact the journal is supposed to have. You can find GIFs on journal websites or the JCR, Journal Citation Reports, module of the Web of Science. So on the Web of Science, click on the Journal Citation Reports tab at the top of the screen. You can click on Browse by Journal to see a ranking of journal titles according to their GIF. You can select the JCR year on the left-hand side menu. So what are the pros and cons of the GIF? The pros are that it's commonly it's a commonly used metric that is familiar to many people. There are some cons. It can be manipulated through self-citation, or which is citing yourself in your own papers, and through editor pressure to cite papers from their journals. Another con is that new journals and smaller specialisms are disadvantaged. Smaller disciplines may have one journal that everyone publishes in and is the leading one in their field, but it may never have as many citations as other larger journals. There are also questions about whether the GIF truly reflects the quality of research being published in the journal. Is a paper good quality simply because it's been published in a so-called high-impact journal? Another commonly used metric is the H-index. The H-index quantifies an individual scientific research output. It measures the productivity of researcher and the citation impact of their publications. The H-index can be found on citation databases and Google Scholar profiles, for example. To calculate an H-index, an author's papers are ranked from the highest number to the lowest. On Web of Science, you do this by creating a citation report for the author. The H-index is the number of articles in the collection, H, that have re received at least H citations over the whole period. This author has a H-index of 61. They have 259 papers that have been cited varying numbers of times. A H-index of 61 means that they have published at least 61 papers 
that have each received at least 61 citations. The H index is shown at the top of the um, citation report here. The graph shows a typical author's productivity over time and the desired trend is upward. So what are the pros and cons of the H index? The pros are that it's easy to use and visualize. It gauges the career progression of an author and it demonstrates their productivity over time. On the other hand, the H index is biased towards more experienced and productive researchers. This disadvantages early career researchers, for example, who are not yet so established. Could this metric be seen more of an indicator of the quantity rather than quality of researchers' outputs? Another metric is the citation analysis. It's simply the number of times an article is cited by other works, so it's effectively a count of the citations. It can be found on citation databases, journal websites, and Google Scholar profiles, for example. It could be said that this metric indicates the impact or quality of an article because it has been actually been read by another author and cited in their work. Here is an example of a citation count in Scopus. You can see in the metric section where the number of citations is stated, and below that links to the papers that actually cited it. This is a Cambridge Authors Google Scholar profile, which shows the number of citations her publications have received, um, as well as her H index in the top right hand corner. As with many other metrics, the citation analysis can be manipulated by authors or editors through self-citation, for example. A recent article in the Times Higher Education Supplement described how an analysis of highly prolific PLOS One journal editors found evidence, evidence for editor-author backscratching. It was suggested that these editors benefited from so-called citation remuneration after accepting large numbers of papers that disproportionately cited their own work. It goes on to suggest that a factor in this was the incentivizing of citations by authors and others with a vested interest in what was described as the citation economy. So I'll now summarize what I've covered so far on metrics. One important point to, is to be wary of manipulation of metrics by authors and editors. Does the metric necessarily reflect the quality of the research itself? Shouldn't research outputs be judged on their own merits? This is what Dora says. Publisher practices can be detrimental to research as they are gaming the system. When you think about how metrics are used to influence influence promotion and grant awards, is this fair? Remember that different databases give different results. The content that is indexed in one citation database varies from another, so the citations will be different too. Be aware that open access papers are cited more. It's easier for people to download and read them because there's no barrier to access via subscription. Review articles are often cited, not the primary research. Review papers are very popular and have their place for evaluating research, but you might prefer to read the original paper. These traditional type of metrics I've been talking about don't take into account the influence outside of research. They're supposed to show the impact of quality within academia. How do you assess interest in research from outside of academia? Well, this is where alt metrics come in. Well, metrics are a relatively new way of measuring non-traditional forms of impact. They are article level metrics and are intended to be complementary to the traditional citation-based analyses that I've been discussing. Well, metrics track the attention received by individual articles using unique IDs such as DOI, PubMed ID, Archive ID or ORCID. Assessing the attention something is receiving won't necessarily indicate quality, but it does indicate interest in a research output and demonstrates how it's been talked about or used. For example, altmetric.com tracks policy papers, which could be said to be an indicator of quality and impact because they show that a particular piece of research is being acted upon by government for the benefit of society. Altmetric.com is one provider of altmetrics. They use donuts or attention scores, which illustrate the attention received for an article from different sources in different colors. These scores are derived from an automated algorithm and represent a weighted count of the amount of attention that has been tracked. 
News items and blog posts are scored much higher than tweets, Facebook mentions and Wikipedia entries. This is probably because more analysis of a journal article is required in those particular media sources. Altmetrics can be found on journal and researcher websites, repositories and more. You can find out much more about altmetric or tension scores on their website, as well as some really helpful guides and videos. Here is the altmetric summary page for a paper. There are several tabs across the top, each of which break down the attention received further. You can click on those tabs to see actual tweets, news items and so on. You can also click to go to the paper on the publisher website and set up an alert every time a paper is mentioned. Altmetric uh, usually does an analysis of the top 100 altmetric attention scores for the year and publishes them. So some serious science, a Zika virus paper was number six in 2016 when the Zika virus was obviously big news. Several publishers actually made their papers on Zika open for access to everyone so that practitioners in countries that could not afford journal subscriptions could read the papers. This may have influenced how much attention Zika received. Some bad science. A retracted STAP cells paper was number four in 2014. Retracted papers will obviously get a lot of attention, but for negative reasons. Some not so serious science. A kidney stones paper was number 74 in 2016. Some papers are just funny, and this is why they've been mentioned a lot. This paper was written by a couple of medical doctors in the US whose patients reported that their kidney stones had been passed during a ride on a particular roller coaster, the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. They decided to test whether this could be true. They created a simulator of a kidney with a stone in it that was appropriate to use at a family-friendly theme park in a warm climate. They rejected uh, bovine or porcine models. It was concealed in a backpack and taken on the ride. The study did actually prove that a kidney stone could be passed by taking a ride on the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad roller coaster. You can see from the altmetric.com summary that the US was the primary place the paper was mentioned and that, perhaps alarmingly, members of the public and also doctors were the main audience. So I'll now summarise what I've covered so far on altmetrics. One good thing about altmetrics is that attention to your research is tracked immediately, but that does mean that older papers may not have any altmetrics, as social media and altmetrics did not exist just a few years ago. Research outputs such as clinical trials, patents, policy documents, books, etc. are also tracked. These aren't always picked up or evaluated with traditional metrics and can be an important indicator of the impact of a paper. Altmetrics indicate impact in the public rather than the academic domain, which can give you a different perspective on your research and open up other avenues. As we have seen, altmetrics are not necessarily an indicator of quality. Papers mentioned could be good, bad, controversial or funny. The sentiments of mentions are not taken into account either. Is the attention being received actually positive or negative? And remember that in order for research outputs to be tracked, the relevant ID needs to be cited in the original blog post or tweet, etc. Tools for researchers is available from altmetric.com. You can download an altmetric bookmarklet or badges that you can use to make altmetrics visible on your online profile. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it was helpful.